Hi, in the previous video we created the geometer. I hope you, you already have it. If, if not, just look for this geometry and then you, you, you just can clone it. But at this point we are going to create the mesh and then we're going to run a simulation. So just to do the mesh, we'll address the mesh in this video. And to do the mesh we need to save this geometry as an STL. So remember you click right click here, export, and then just fill in here, you give it a name. I advise you just avoid spaces so you can give a name here and then STL format and you have the option between binary and text I like to, to save in, te in text or ASCII later we, we are going to see why and then also remember to use a high a fine mesh high, high resolution because the final mesh will be greatly depend on the, of the quality of this underlying geometry so, now that you have done that, we can move to proper open phone or Linux, our environment. So here I have prepared this case. And the first thing is that I already have the geometry here, but I, we have the geometry in the link in the description. You can download all of these files. You have here a single surface geometry, and then we split it in multiple surfaces. Uh, to split use in multiple uh, surfaces. Remember that in open phone you have an utility called surface auto patch. Okay, so for instance, we give it an inlet geometry. Will be um, this is the output. Okay, and then we give it an angle create area similar to the one we set up in 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 uh, in SnapX and it will automatically split that geometry so we have our output there and for instance i will do this to check for this keyword inside that file and i see that it was split in five patches or four but one two three four five patches and if i open part of you or part of them, whatever you want okay you see that you have this geometry, okay? And each of these colors correspond to a uh, different uh, surface. So now, in Snappy, uh, Snappy, we can access those patches, okay? That patches information, and we can we can you do local refinement. But one of the things that usually we don't know to do which patch is which one, okay? Because inside that file, we, we, we know that we have in the triangulation solid patch zero. Which one is patch zero? I know that in the data structure will be the first solid keyword that we find in, in the in the in the STL file. So to identify those patches or surfaces we can use this filter for instance threshold. So let me filter from zero to one and see here that this is patch zero then if I want to see for instance patch one okay you filter here patch one would be this part of the pipe okay so you see patch 0, 1, and then we go to the other one and so on, up, until we identify all the patches. Then we have patch 2 will be this part of the pipe, then we have the inlet, and clearly patch 4 would be the outlet. Okay, so Okay, in this way we identify, we know kind of, now we know how those patches, but sometimes also people uh, sort of want to extract these patches from here. And it's relatively easy now, as soon as you, 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 you apply the filter, you can save this information into a separate STL file, but before you have it, you need to apply another filter. So as you go to filters, for instance, this filter extracts through phase, you apply, and now you can save this you see here that you can access STL and you give it the name, outlet, whatever you want. You choose in what format you want to save it. And let's open that one. Okay, so we have it here. And see that now we save it that single patch. Okay. And we can do proceed with every single patch and then assemble everything together. We can do it in that way, or we can do it everything all together in one single file. So, I already put that information there, 
and let's create the, the, the image. So let's go to the system folder and let's open the three basic dictionaries. Okay, we have the block mesh, the snappy mesh quality, and surface to extract. Okay. So the first thing to do, let's create block mesh. Okay, so see that we already set up the dimensions as we already have this template that everything is fully parametric. So this dimension will enclose our geometry. So let's type block mesh. Okay. And then we can open here we can see the background mesh and then we can put inside this one our geometry which we're using multiple surface and see this is what we have so we have this TL and we create clearly the box that will enclose everything uh, one thing important I, I don't like to, to, to have a background mesh that fully fit the geometry okay so I like to have something slightly uh, bigger just to avoid intersecting those surfaces okay so and remember that all the refinements will be done in reference to this background mesh okay so at one point if I choose one refinement label this cell will be split into eight cells in 3D and so on so now we have all our visual reference and we can go to the next step so now we need to find we see that we have a uh, chart angle so we need to extract those features so we use the utility surface filter extract that i already set up you have it here we we'll read our input geometry we give a reference angle usually 150 is a good choice remember the higher this value the more features that you will capture and then again we can explore what we have so far so for instance what we did there if we open the geometry okay you see that at this point if we don't capture this one we won't resolve well the chart angles especially this one here the joint between the pipes so by using that filter what we're doing is extract the information and the mesh in time we're going to enforce that the mesh ha has to to snap precisely to those edges so see that those are the feature the features that we capture okay those white lines and then we can choose a refinement level here or just enforce the snapping here. remember when here you have the visual reference but the angle that impose here when you set this angle and the dictionary surface filter is tried it, it is a complement so if you put here 30 here will be 180 minus whatever you find here okay so we have also the angles we generated the block mesh so now let's explore a little bit the snappy access dictionary and one thing that these four dictionaries that we have we have here kind of you can use as, uh, as your templates so far we have tested we like we were really reliable the parameters that we have here so what you need is just change the input geometry and change the naming convention so you see that the first thing is that we're going to generate everything in one step remember that you can also do it in different steps we read the input geometry the geometry is always located in constant surface full formation so you go here you have all the information there even the image that we generated in the, in the previous step so we if we read this file we give it this internal name and then here's where we where we access those internal patches so remember that patch zero was the small inlet in the two we're calling patch one and two were the walls call it pipe everything will be grouped in this same uh user defined patch and then patch three and four so this is what well, well, what is important to access that information because we can have local control and now we have these regions we can set boundary conditions and also in these regions we we can change the refinement values we keep reading this parameter is pretty much a standard don't need to change you can play a little bit but those are probably enough for most of the applications then we read the feature angle those features that we started are this one so we're reading that file and um, 
we're not doing any refinement, we're just forcing to snap precisely to those sharp, sharp angles. And then we apply, we were here, we apply the refinement on the surfaces. And remember, this surface refinement, everything is done in reference to the background mesh. So we already have an idea now that each cell is about 0 0.1 meters. We have it defined it there. So the global refinement is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, sorry. And then we access local patches, the radius. And this is important, okay? Here we need to access the name that it is set in the STL file, not the name that we define it here. Here. It's a little bit confusing, but it's the way that the developer chose to do it. So I see that in patch tree that will correspond to the inlet, we want to use this refinement level and so on. Also remember that we can use wildcards or so we can group patch one and two that we know those correspond to all and we're given a refinement level to two. So we know our reference cells and we know the size will be about 0 0.025 for those cells in those patches. Then we can use also regions. In this case, we're accessing the whole surface and we want to use a refinement using distant modes. In this case, it is switch off and now we're putting here zero just to, but just to show you that you can also apply this one in conjunction with everything. So in, in this case, you will refine a distant normal to, to, to this patch this many times, okay? Then this is important, you need to give a location in mesh, so is the point is inside the STL will be external mesh, is the point is inside the STL will be internal, and try to avoid intersecting the STLs. And actually I think you, you need to be really lucky to intersect that one. But in any case, try to, to avoid that one. So in this case, this point I know that is inside, and we're going to have an internal mesh. Then these are the parameters that are controlling our snapping. So this is pretty much we, we have tested, they are really reliable. So don't, we don't need to change this one. But in any case, if you're having bad meshes, probably you can try to increase the number of iterations that you do. Okay, it's not guaranteed that you will get a better mesh, but probably will work. Okay, but most of the time this parameter is okay. And then we're in the section where we add the bundle layer. So basically the first center we choose is we have to have, if we want to have relative sizes or actual sizes in this case, let, let, let's use relative sizes, the standard parameters, the expansion ratio, the thickness of the final layer and the minimum thickness. So remember this will be in percentage of the background mesh. So it will be kind of, the final layer will be 50% of the cell next to that wall, which wall this one. Okay, and here we need to access the name that we gave in the region. So we know that patch one and patch two are grouped in pipe. Okay, so the wall, and we're accessing those here. And we want to put five layers there. So it's up to you how many layers you want to put, five, 10, 20, whatever. And then you have the open settings that controls many things. And most of the time, probably you will need to change these parameters or labels as they are. But if you want, you feel free to play with these numbers. Then remember during the mention, Process uh, continuous the snappy checks the mesh quality. So here we have the enter for mesh quality, and here we access another dictionary that we're going to see next. Let's finish this one, this file, and then you have the debug debug flags. So if you want to say if intermediate steps or diagnostic for the boundary layer meshes, whatever, you can use and command these actions. So now let's move to mesh quality, and again. Uh, these are our parameters, so we have tested and they most of the time they were okay. So you just set your quality criteria. So we have a rather high value here. We use a 75, sometimes I use 80. I know that 80 is also okay. So let's use 80 here. Also here we have a rather low value for the maximum of excuses. The default the value is 20, we reduce this to four. So probably this will increase a little bit the machine time, but it, you will get better measures. And then you have the rest of the values that you can leave as a standard. And one value that probably is also testing to command in this one, okay? So previously, if you were dealing with part Lagrangian particles, sometimes it was required to use this action to avoid some errors. 
So now on the latest version, there is a new tracking algorithm, so it's play, it, it is safe to play with this parameter, and this also will give you best, best uh, layer insertion. So I highly recommend you also to put this one just a large value. But again, there are many values here. It's really, really tricky to see what they, they really do. So the most important ones, in our opinions, are this one, this here, and probably this one as well. So that's all. That that, that is our dictionary. So at this point, we can go and do the mesh. Remember, you can do it in parallel. In this case, I will run and set it. So I will go snappy x mesh. I want to overwrite everything and also I would like to save my log file and off we go okay it is complaining it should be overwrite and off we go so let's wait a little bit and let's see the final result of our mesh okay here we are we have the final mesh so remember, at the end, you can check the quality of the boundary layer and you see that pretty much we have a perfect mesh here. And we can also run check mesh. And let's see what we have. Okay, so see that we have the actual patches that we define it in the 2, 1, pipe outlet. And pretty much it's a really good quality, really good quality mesh. So, no terminality less than 70, squeeze is also really low. So, this is a good mesh, we're happy. So, let's also do the final test. Remember that meshing is also a really visual process. Also, we need to open it and just do this final check. And see that it's a beautiful mesh, it's very well it's resolved there, snap it. All my sharp, sharp angles have been well resolved. And let's see what we have in the surface. And see here, this is these two refinement levels. See all the original background mesh and the transition. And here you see clearly your five boundaries that were created in the mesh process. Also here, all the boundaries. So this was why I wanted to access those local patches because if you read a single patch you you cannot access just these surfaces here so the image will be done also in this patch here okay normal to this patch you will have the boundary layer measured in this case i didn't want it so i needed to access those local patches and let's do another here yeah, a cut plane and see what we have there so we put da, 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 show plan and translation and this is what we have and click on the slide so this is what we have here all the transition pretty much is a really good quality mesh even here where we have this really strong short angle it managed to resolve very well so at this point we're ready to go to do all our simulation so that will be our next video setting up everything but at this point we have the naming convention everything set up so we'll be pretty much pretty very easy. So here you see that we can access also the local patches. So inlet one, okay, then inlet two, the small pipe there. Let me change the colors to a constant one. And I don't want to see anything there. Okay, and then I can access the outlet. And then we can see the pipe as well. Okay. So this is our geometry, our mesh, ready to go. And the final test that I like to do, I also like to, to open the boundary file just to check that everything was set up properly. Remember that here you, you, you set the base type. So the inlet, when I do the simulation, will be a proper inlet, so it's a patch. The inlet 2, 1, and the outlet. And the pipe is a wall, so everything is set up correctly and will be ready to go. So pretty much I think we're done. This the next video starting from here, we're going to do the mesh. Thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next time.